And welcome to the Friday edition of the Nightly Nugent listeners. I want you to go to tednugent.com. Go to tednugent.com because there is a vinyl signed of Fred Bear. I mean, Ted, 35 years ago, you put this song out, and it's one of the greatest songs of all time. It's the number one hunting song of all time. But what I really want to start with today is, and I know how emotional you you were when you wrote that, and you were out for you were outside and you came in, the, the song just came to you. And I would like you just to take our listeners back to when you picked up that guitar, when this thought first crossed your mind, and what was the first thing that you played with that on your mind? <laughs> You know, Keith, uh, music has always inspired me, and it's really funny. I was talking to my sister Kathy the other day because we're getting ready to have the 4th of July together. And uh, we talked about being raised in a bow hunting family. My dad was a bow hunter, and I was too young to understand any of that, a mushy-brained child. But I remember going up north to Grayling every year to go bow hunting and meeting this tall, lanky, friendly, funny guy up in Grayling, Michigan. And I always played my guitar. I was trying to play Chuck Berry stuff. And then I would shoot my bow and arrow. Every day. I would play the guitar. I sounded like crap for the first dozen years. And I couldn't hit anything with my bow, but I kept at it. I kept at it. I kept at it. And it's important to mention those dynamics because isn't that the American dream where you just never give up? We're in the swirling dust of our dreams and we stumble, but we get right back up. Yep. And when I met Fred Bear, he was just a kind man, but I didn't realize he was Fred Bear. <laughs> Talking about bow hunting and bows and arrows. I mean, he was like the Chuck Berry of bows and arrows. And by the time I was seven or eight, I started to realize who he was. And he invited me into his life and I hunted with him almost every year from high school on. Just a funny guy, a smart guy, a visionary. He was returning this Industrial Revolution velocity to modernity, modernity, to a more primal time of getting close to game and understanding our spiritual relationship with God's miraculous creation. Now, I couldn't have put those words together till I was in my teens, but I started to realize the spirit of the wild. Yes. And so our last hunt together in October of 1987, it's so emotional. He, was in, he had an oxygen tank, and we walked down the lanes together. Everybody else was bow hunting, and I just tried to sponge the man, the, the, the vision, the, the strength, the fortitude, the goodwill, the, 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 the decency. And he thanked me for promoting bow hunting in a world of rock and roll that was anti-hunting, animal rights insanity. And he said he watched my interviews and everywhere he went, people asked him about Ted Nugent because I have a big mouth and I saw the animal rights people infiltrating the media. So I'd fight back. I wouldn't just, well, I'm not going to get involved. No, I'm going to get involved. And I fought back and Fred thanked me. So that next uh, April he died. God damn it. I'm in my barn right now, and there's pictures of Fred. And there's bows that he gave me, and I shot my bow this morning. It's so crazy how emotional people can be. So I got up that morning, and I went to give my dogs their biscuits. And instead, I picked up the guitar, and I just started. I didn't know what was going on, but I just went... There I was, back in the wild again And I felt right at home, where I belong And it just flowed, like right now, the tears would not stop And my mom had just died And because the bow hunting life was such a powerful family force and Fred Bear was such a powerful force in that family of bow hunting. And it brought me such joy, such fulfillment, 
such deep spiritual gratification that I was doing good in God's work. And the song happened and Shemaine held me. I kept singing. I didn't write anything. I didn't have paper and pencil. I had no idea I was going to make those chord changes. And I called Michael Lutz, my bass player from Brownsville Station, and Gunnar Ross, God rest his soul, just passed away a couple years ago. And I said, something's happening. We have to get in the studio. And we got in the studio and take one. I showed the guys the song. I mean, I just flooding tears, Keith. I couldn't stop them. And Gunner didn't know who Fred Bear was, and Michael had heard of him, but didn't know how important he was. And we recorded it, and I just made a quick a pearl sound over in Canton, Michigan. I just made a couple cassettes for Henrietta, his widow, and a couple of my buddies, Claude Pollington, some Fred Bear guys. Yeah. And we did it in a couple hours. So it wasn't a production. We didn't get the EQ. We didn't take, take time. It just was so organic. So pure love and hurt and heartbreak, but positive knowing that I had that time with Fred. And somebody snuck it to Doug Podell on WRRF radio, the number one rock station in Michigan, the whole Midwest. And, and Doug said, oh, a song, Fred the Bear. No, it's not Fred the Bear. It's, it's Fred Bear as a guy. <laughs> but the music is so powerful because it was so honest and so pure and unfiltered and, and, and ferocious and, and unplanned, a, a martial arts musical passionate moment. And since that day, there's not a pickup truck in America that doesn't have that song. And the families that have communicated, millions of families have communicated what the song means to them, how it bonds their families, how it re reunites their families, how they play it at the, at the funeral of a loved one. On opening day in every camp in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, all across this country, and I know Stranglehold is powerful and Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang is clearly the number one love song in the world. So my music has power, but nothing comes close to Fred Bear. When we play that song live, let, let me summarize it thusly. This vinyl release is the celebration of Fred's passing where we have a Fred Bear Day, March 5th on his birthday in Grayling, Michigan. And we're erecting a beautiful life-size bronze statue. Go to fredbearday.com. And I don't know how you, I guess you go to tednugent.com to get the vinyl, but it'll have a live, unbelievable jam session of Fred Bear, an acoustic campfire version of Fred Bear, and then the original take one spontaneous primal scream that Michael and Gunnar and I captured on that fateful morning. But it's a song about all of our Fred Bears. It's not, it's not just about Fred. It's about all of our Freds. And I have so many stories about feuding brothers that didn't hunt together after their dad died and then they heard the song together. One was in Ohio, one was in the UP of Michigan. They happened to have heard it on the radio the same day and after being disconnected for dozens of years, they got back together again because their dad was their Fred Bear and your dad was right. your Fred Bear. That's right. So it's, um, I'm so lucky to be so emotional. I mean, I can be the craziest, most fire-breathing maniac in the world, and I can be as pure as God intended for our love and admiration for our lost brothers and family. And that's what the Fred Bear song means. And what we captured that day, we studied that version, and I've learned to play it lick for lick because it was spontaneous and nobody prepared anything. I had to go back and learn it, and I just sang the words. I didn't write them down. It's as pure as a musical moment could ever be. And from my family to all those families out there that have made this such a powerful, earth-moving piece of music, we are Fred Bear Blood Brothers. Very powerful, Ted. Please go to tednugent.com. 
and you can get that vinyl CD signed. There's all kinds of other great stuff on the website. Ted, very, very powerful. I thank you personally for the song because you are right. My father was my Fred Bear, and um, I know it means a lot to a lot of people out there. Now, as promised, when we get together tomorrow, we're going to go back and we're going to tie this whole week together. We're going to talk about how we can solve the negativity and focus on the positivity of what Fred Bear meant to the outdoor world. And we're going to do that tomorrow. We're going to talk about Hunter Nation right here on the weekend edition of the Nightly News. Ted, take care, buddy. In the wind, he's still alive. Mm -hmm.